Not bad, right? As you know, we have our spring event Mini Mayhem at Busco Beach coming up on April 13th and 14th here in North Carolina. But also, this is just in. We are going to Texas to the Pate Swap Meet again this year in 2019 in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. That's going to be April 25th. 26th and 27th we're going to be down there with go power sports for that annual meet and then also we are going with go power sports to the mini bike gambler 500 now that is a 100 mile endurance mini bike race in oregon and like i said go power sports is going to be bringing us there we're going to be riding some of their bikes i believe the date is May 18th on that one. Anyway, you can find more information in the description of this video and on our Facebook page at Cars and Cameras Reviews. Looking forward to seeing you guys in North Carolina, Texas, and Oregon. Enjoy the video. What is going on, everybody? I'm John. I'm Isaac. And we are Cars and Cameras, and a lot of you guys have asked for it, so we are bringing back the Honda Trail 70. The uh, Honda CT70 made an appearance first about a year ago yeah. uh, on the Cars and Cameras channel. I bought one for about 350 bucks, and then Ike went out and bought like three of them. Uh, they're, they're awesome. They're tiny little road legal motorcycles. So a little bit of history on my bike. It is a 1974 model. Uh, I bought it without a title, but I got a bill of sale. We applied to get titles, and it's now road legal insured as a motorcycle technically. Um, I swapped the original 70cc engine, 72cc engine, excuse me, out for a 140. I think it's the YX140, but it's one of the most popular engines for these bikes. It's 140cc, don't know how much power it makes, but mine has done about 50 miles an hour. Anyway, Go Power Sports just sent me a brand new Makuni 26mm carburetor for this bike. Uh, so I'm going to clean out the fuel tank. Uh, there are a few other things we need to do, and I'm going to go out for a ride. So if you have a keen eye, you can see there are a couple differences between the last time the CT70 made an appearance on the channel. Uh, everything's kind of half installed. Uh, I bought this fancy muffler and exhaust pipe, but it's not lining up right with the, with the bracket. So I'm gonna need to do something about that. I took the chrome pieces off of the frame, and so now my oil cooler has nowhere to hang. So I'm gonna need to fabricate some kind of bracket for my oil cooler. But the most important thing is that this engine doesn't run well anymore. Um, around June or July, when we had our summer mini mayhem event at Busco Beach, I took this and uh, it was a ton of fun to ride, but I think I overheated it because these engines, unlike a Predator 212, they don't have a cooling fan that's able to cool it uh, at low and stop speeds. So these engines really can't sit there and idle. Um, and we did a lot of idling and slow speed crawling on those trail rides. So I'm wondering if I overheated it. So the first thing I need to do is check the valves, adjust the valves, and then I'm going to fire it up. Well, I'm gonna fire it up first, just so you guys can hear that it's not running right. Then we're gonna adjust the valves. There it goes. Did you hear it? Yeah, that yeah it'll yeah. sit there and bog so you can give it it does fine in higher rpm but like a low rpm it just dies another part that i got that we're going to install today is this so we had big dreams of driving to the beach on the ct70s last year and it just never happened because well our bikes weren't reliable enough they wouldn't go fast enough for long enough but first we're going to go ahead and adjust these valves and see if we can get this engine to run right Ooh, let me see what you got i need some of that ike magic Oh my. We need to make a parts run real quick. We have about 12 minutes till they close. To the golf cart. Ready? Yep. Look at that parking job. Beautiful. We made it, dude. We made it. So what we did was we uh, stopped off and uh, picked us up. Uh, Fueler gauge, cheap enough that we don't mind bending them to fit down in the hole. Ike's been friends with the owner of that part store for a long time, and uh, he's been trying to buy this square body Chevrolet truck off of him for a while, and he finally got a number out of him. Do you like what you see? I don't know, man. And the, actually, the price is kind of right. Yeah. All right, time to go home. See you there. 
All right, so they did not have the ideal feeler gauges for us. So what we're gonna do is bend one to make it fit. We need a three thousandths. Yep, three thousandths and a five. You turn the engine over until the valve is closed. Yeah. And it's it's tight, but I don't think it's holding the intake valve open. There's that one. You can hear that now? Yep. All right, so I'm gonna hang the oil cooler somewhere just temporarily, and I'm gonna warm up the bike and see if it's fixed. Put some fresh Train the fuel out gas of it, in it, and then we'll find out if it's out of gas or not. Yeah. Because when re you remove the fuel line, if a bunch of gas comes out, I'd be afraid of the fuel. Right, right. Yeah. If it just dribbles out a little bit, it's just we're out, out of gas. gas. No dribbleage. No dribbleage at all. So we might be uh, just putting some gas in it. Yeah. So it's doing the exact same thing as Busco Beach. Maybe I was out of gas at Busco Beach. All right, dude, all this trouble. Man, I might for have just out, been of out of gas. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. wait. Whoa, 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 let me get this straight. Yep. This thing hadn't been ridden since Busco Beach, right? That's correct. <laughs> and I haven't put gas in it since Busco Beach. Um, all right, y'all. Nailed don't, it. Don't give him a hard time. I did point out that in the fuel line, it looked like it had plenty of fuel because there was fuel in the fuel line. But it's funny that it's out of gas. It actually fooled even me. Even Ike. If you'd like, you can take the fuel filter off, Blood pour some it. pour some gas in it, slosh the whole bike around, open up that valve, and see if anything comes out. If not, then I would just fill it up and uh, you know put that fuel line back on and fill her up. Okay. So you put fuel in it, yeah. slosh her around real good. Slosh her around real good. Like you're mad at it, John. Like you're mad at it because it ran out of gas on you. I can't be mad at it. Are you sure? I can only be mad it at it. It left you myself. walking. <laughs> Alright, that's good now. Quickly uh quickly uh try to grab what's in the tank right now. Right, okay. While it's sh while it shook while up. up. Alright, so I'm gonna put the air filter back on. This is a 26 millimeter Makuni carburetor from Go Power Sports. Same one you'd put on like a stage three uh, Predator 212, but uh, these 26 millimeters are great for these 140s. They're a great upgrade over like, a, I think a 22 is what they would usually come with. Anyway, check out all your go-kart and new bike carburetors, gopowersports.com. Find links in the description of the video. Not bad, right? Not bad. I think we need to play with the little needle adjustment. Fuel mixture. There's a, uh, it's like a dead spot mid RPM. Okay. Sure. Let's do it. Yeah. That is a hot mess in there, though. I will tell you that. All the junk. Yeah, all the junk hanging out. Got to clean yeah. it up. Uh, so Ike is going to show us how to richen up the mid range of the carburetor, right? Well. It's Pretty much going to be the main riching up pretty much everything. We can only go one more richer. Well, that's all we need, probably. So, this clip was at the second to the last notch. We are going to go all the way to the last notch, which is going to lift it up and make it a little bit richer. Let more fuel in, right? Yeah. Cool. Here we go. Now we can make a bracket for the uh, oil cooler here. So we ran to the store and grabbed some eighth inch thick flat bar. Uh, I cut it into five inch sections and drilled two holes 
to bolt into the, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's the piece, the chrome piece that sweeps under here. I couldn't fit that original piece because of this exhaust. So I had these bolts to work with and uh, let's see if it fits. Those fit pretty well too. Good. There we go. Hey, clicked into place. Somebody got it. I think I'm happy. In a perfect world, I'd smooth out those grind marks a little more, but it's fine. I'm gonna throw some paint on it. Headed outside for some paint. I'm gonna use some uh, rubberized undercoating here because it'll be durable and um, it should smooth over imperfections. Mission accomplished. All right, so the oil cooler bracket is drying. Uh, the last major thing I wanted to do is do the sprocket change. Go from the 38 tooth to a 33 tooth. Um, top speed currently uh, was around 52 miles an hour or so. It'd be nice to see 60 with this 33, but we're gonna find out. Uh, gonna get to that tomorrow. See you then. Good afternoon, guys. I'm back here at work on my 74 CT70. I had to give the bike a detail. My own dad last week was like, has your bike always looked that terrible? No. No, dad, that's just neglect. Um, anyway, I'm about to do the sprocket install. So I currently have a 38 tooth rear sprocket on here. I have to switch to a 33. And once the sprocket's installed, I'm gonna check the oil, check the tire pressure, and then head over to Ike's work because I forgot some camera batteries over there when we were filming the other day. So that'll be a good time to test it out. All right. This is a mess. All right, so I managed to get the wheel off now I just need some snap ring pliers, can take the snap ring off, and then I should be able to remove this bracket. Sweet. And there it is. I think there's a decent size difference there. This old sprocket was about worn out too. If you look at the teeth, they look like shark fins. Just realized I forgot about this piece here. I don't know what it is, maybe some kind of dust protector. Um, looks pretty worn out, but I'm gonna transfer it over anyway. Bam, look at that. The uh, chain's nice and tight. Uh, I just need to lubricate the chain and I can go for a ride. All right, so I'm gonna hop on the bike, head over to Ike's work, pick up those camera batteries and see how I like the new sprocket. So I took the bike out earlier today uh, with the intention of riding to Ike's work and then it started spitting and sputtering when I just left the neighborhood. Um, I'm guessing that I'm not getting enough fuel flow to the carburetor and I'm draining the carburetor bowl. It's just a shot in the dark because it seems to be fine first, second, third gear and then when I get into fourth gear it acts like it's out of fuel but then when I give it a couple seconds to kind of, you know, get more fuel or so I think it runs fine again. Uh, so I need Ike's expertise is what that means. 
Uh, so you will see that next time. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to Cars and Cameras for more awesome go-kart mini bike CT70 content. Support us in what we do by picking up a hat, sticker, hoodie, or t-shirt at cars-cameras.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.